really it's hard to tailor through. Yeah. Man, the fruit just. I've never had shrimp. I don't think the spring is that good. No, no, she works at oh. home. I didn't even show Lucky you. Thank goodness, yeah. I'm glad I didn't have to make that commute this summer. Oh, Charlie? Yeah. yeah. Come on. Good to hear. Of course, Johnny caught some more. Everybody ready? ready. No. Let's go ahead anyway. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're taking an extra minute. <laughs> you ready? Go. <laughs> We're going to have the call to order and roll call. Thank you. DeVoe? Here. Watson? Here. Mattingly? Here. Propes? Here. Rollinger? Present. Schrader? Here. Stannard? And Vogel. Mr. Chair, we have a quorum this evening with six members present. Thank you. Shall we all join together in the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> to read the previous minutes. Do we have any corrections or additions to the minutes of our previous meeting? Gee, they look great. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean you're going to make a motion if we approve them? I'm, I make a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting, August 8th, 2013, as, as presented. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Both same side. First item on the uh, agenda is CUP 13-004 for the Sapphire Property Single Family Residence. Request for conditional use permit approval to change existing commercial use to sing single family residential residents on the property at 404 North State Highway 67. Legally, legally described as Lot 4, Block 2, Woodland Hills Filing 1. Thank you, Chair, and good evening to Planning Commission. Thank you for coming out tonight and providing us with your recommendations for City Council. We do appreciate that. Tonight I come before you with a conditional use permit for Sapphire Properties, LLC. Our applicant, Mr. Normstein, is here this evening and after I'm done with my presentation. And if you have any questions of me, uh, he'll also be coming up. He can answer any questions that you might have also of him. This concerns property located at 404 North Highway 67. And this property has in the past been a single family resident, residential use. Currently it's a commercial use. The applicant is requesting that it go back to its pre-existing use of single-family residential. Give you some background on this particular case. The structure that's currently there, the existing structure that you just saw on the first slide, was built in 1941. And then, of course, in 1969, we had established our zoning ordinance, so it preceded zoning ordinance establishment. And this picture here is a map of the original zoning map that was started in 1969. And it confirms that this particular property, which is shown up in red, in a red circle here, was zoned R1, a residential use. Then somewhere between 1969 and 1974, we did confirm with a preliminary plat for the area to the west that also was marked C1, that this area was uh, converted to C1, which is a commercial zone that's compatible to the current commercial zone that it carries, which is community commercial. Um, both of those compatible because they're both used for office space, retail type of commercial. In 2004, the applicant and the LLC uh, purchased this property and it was immediately converted to commercial occupancy status and remodeled. 
And then more recently in 2012, it did receive a new parking lot. And with that, there were several requirements for surface drainage improvements and things of that nature that took place at that time. As with all of our uh, conditional use permit cases, we did send out adjacent property notification letters within 150 feet circumference of this property, letting everyone know that the request has been submitted to us to change it to single family residential use. This particular map here shows you not only the surrounding properties, but it also shows you the current zoning for this area. The hot pink is what we consider our community commercial zone. And over in to the east across uh, Highway 67 is our urban residential zone. And then off to the west, we have suburban residential. And you'll note that there are two businesses. All the rest of the surrounding properties are residentials, but there are two businesses um, that are immediately adjacent uh, and a couple going up the strip as well. But the two that are noted is Baja Broadband, which is immediately to the south of this property. And then to the north, we have Community Cupboard, which recently just moved into that location. And just so you know, we didn't get any feedback either way from any of the adjacent property notice letters or the sign posting or any of the publications that we, we've put in on this. This next slide here shows you the site map that's submitted with this conditional use permit. Things to, to carry with you on this are that we, you do, it does show the State Highway 67 here. It does show Braha, uh, Baja Broadband, excuse me, to the south here and then the Lloyd parcel to the north. Uh, you'll notice that there is an existing ramp which has made it handicap accessible, and there is a handicap accessible um, parking lot space in, in the parking lot as well to meet commercial standards. That will all remain the same so that it can, if a resident wanted to move in that would need that cap capability, that would be a bonus for them. Uh, and then there are several other spots on in this parking lot as well. And the access does come straight off of the State Highway 67. When we evaluate a conditional use permit, we refer to Section 18.57, which gives us 11 criteria for which we would analyze each case or request that comes before us. I'm going to go through each condition, each criteria, and explain to you how we feel that it complies. The first criteria is that the use shall have a demonstrated direct need to be located in the proposed location. And of course, going back to the fact that this is, has in the past been used as a single family residential use, it is surrounded to the east and the west by residential uses. And right now, we have a tremendous need for rental leasable living space in Witham Park, particularly with Cheris Bible College coming in, and the need there will increase. And this does have an ability to be remodeled very easily back into a single family use, which is also very beneficial. And this is this uh, community commercial zone that it's placed in is one of our lower impact commercial zones as well. So it is very easily placed near a residential use. Criteria number two talks about how the proposed development or use will not endanger the public health or welfare. This is a single family home, so it's very low impact use. So it does comply. Criteria number three talks about how it will not substantially injure the property values of surrounding neighbors. And with this being near residential zones and uses to the east and the west, it, it blends in well as far as property values and vicinity uh, harmony with those two uses. Criteria number four talks about how it shall be in harmony with the area in which it's located Again, going back to the fact that this was at once used as a single family home and it fit in just fine with that neighborhood. So that shows us that it has the ability to fit in harmoniously with that same use again in the, in, into the future. Criteria number five talks about how it shall conform 
to the city plans, uh, plans such as growth management, transportation, utilities, capital improvements, downtown redevelopment. The comprehensive plan map does show continued single-family residential uses to the east and the west as exists right now. And the utilities director also reviewed this conditional use permit and approved it with no issues. Criteria number six talks about making sure that it fits to standards, city standards and requirements. Those such as zoning, subdivision, utilities, construction, business regulations and engineering specifications. This remodel will comply with Teller building, fire, building and fire code, building codes and fire codes, as well as the city engineer and city inspector have both reviewed this particular permit and approved its use without issues. Criteria number seven talks about how uh, the use shall be designed or constructed to ensure that it, it accommodates on-site and off-site traffic. Of course, it has that nice parking lot um, off, to, uh, off, off of Highway uh, 67. And this is a new development here. After we sent out the packets to you, we did get contacted by uh, Colorado Department of Transportation. For some reason, they always seem to contact me after I give the packet. But they came back, and they did just point out to us one minor thing, that this particular property has changed uses over the years several times, but for reasons unknown, just has not received an access permit. And according to their regulations, um, it was Mr. Carl Buford from CDOT that contacted me on the 20th, which was just Tuesday, and he explained that um, any existing legal access to the state highway system shall be allowed to remain or be moved or reconstructed under the terms of an access permit. And so they're just wanting this to take place for establishment of that access. In fact, they're going to waive the fee that would be required with an access permit. They really just want the documentation. So I have written that in to a condition at the end, which I've put in red so that you'll understand that's been added since your packet, um, but it can be easily taken care of. Criteria number eight talks about the pro proposed use being designed, constructed, and maintained with regard to the existing topography, talks about surface drainage, taking into consideration any natural and man-made hazards, any streams and environmentally significant features. And really, in all honesty, there, there's no topography challenges. Uh, this is a fairly flat area. Uh, a lot of the, the challenges with the surface drainage that might have existed before were taken care of when the new parking lot was put in in 2012. Uh, so the drainage plan was um, approved along with that. And it has a very nice detention area here that goes into the fence line. It, it's very well accommodated to meet those needs. Criteria number nine talks about the proposed use being designed and constructed and maintained to uh, accommodate adequate water supply, wastewater, as well as solid waste disposal and air quality. And there are no issues that were noted to us from the city water, it, uh, water sewer and wastewater standpoints. Our city utilities director did again look at this conditional use permit and site plan and approve it. There are minimal uh, uh, air quality effects with a, a single family home use of this nature and the property surface water drainage was addressed again back in 2012 with that parking lot permit improvement. Criteria number 10 talks about how the development or use shall be designed and constructed and maintained to ensure that there's no public danger of fire, explosion, or other safety hazards uh, on the public and vicinity properties. And again, this remodel will comply with the International Fire Code standards. Criteria number eight, the last one, talks about how the development or use may be required to provide architectural design schemas, other amenities such as fencing, landscaping, buffering others, or other aesthetic enhancements, 
as required by City Council. There's really no need for any exterior, and there are no exterior changes planned. Uh, it has a very nice, pleasant, inviting demeanor. It was once a single-family home use, so it actually appears as that. And there's even a swing. I don't know if you can see it. I showed it in an earlier slide up close in the back just to remind us that this can easily be converted back into a single-family residential use. And it's fully fenced in the backyard as well, has a couple of sheds, so it does fit that very well. As far as comprehensive plan, it fits in and contributes to our principles found in the comprehensive plan of ensuring that we strengthen the spectrum of the city's housing stock, which right now is a tremendous need, I believe, because of the fact that we have Cherish Bible College coming in and we'll need some more rental leasable property, livable property. So we feel that it meets all the criteria. And we do have one condition approval. It's in red because it's been added since, your, again, your staff packet's been sent out. The applicant, I'll read this word for word, the applicant will apply for and acquire an access permit from CDOT to establish a legal access for the base vehicle counts. This permit will be waived of fees and no construction will be required as part of the issuance of this permit. So staff recommends approval, and if you have any questions, I can take those now. Um, <clears throat> is, is, is the building currently occupied, and if so, for what usage? It is not occupied at this time, and it's still commercial, commercial use until it's converted into the single-family use. Good question. I, I see that the site development plan is just a little over a year old. What's transpired, if anything, of importance to us in that 13 or 14 months? That, just the parking lot improvements, and this might even be the site plan that was provided for that improvement as well, used back then. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 1941, mm -hmm. when that was built, Yes. was an access permit required? You know, that's a really good question. I'm not sure I know the answer to that. Uh, probably the only not. They're asking for it because they don't have anything in their file. Yeah. They lost it. Okay. Could be. Based on the age of the house, uh -huh. um, is it going to be brought up to new current codes? Yeah. There will it, be it, nothing grandfathered. Yes. And it looks like the applicant, maybe we can Ready let for him the answer that. Presentation. Question. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Norm Steen. I'm here representing Sapphire Properties. I'm the managing member of Sapphire Properties. Uh, as uh, Ms. Barnell uh, outlined, this is a property that was built in 1941. Um, my guess is that CDOT didn't exist in 1941. So uh, I guess, as a matter of fact, uh, this, this property has, has not had authorized highway access for 72 years. So I do have that access permit uh, ready to go, and we'll take care of that. So minor matter. Uh, as a matter of uh, whether it's, uh, I'm sorry, let's pop your, your question once again, please. The code. Code. Uh, it does meet full uh, commercial code now. It, uh, in, in 2004, we had it completely replumbed. We were rewired. Uh, full heating, uh, ventilation, air conditioning system was installed. And last year, a $17,000 parking lot was installed. So I, I think it's probably one of the finer properties in the, in the neighborhood, in my view. So uh, there should not be any requirement for... Uh, any waivers. It does meet full commercial code and, and certainly within residential code as well. Questions? Uh, I'm just curious. Uh, what's the primary economic or, or, or financial driver for wanting to go commercial to residential? Uh, my, I, I I purchased the building to operate my personal business from. Uh, I did that for since from 2004 to 2011. In 2011, I changed careers. Uh, that building has been up for sale since the fall of 2011. We've had a number of offers, but nothing. Nobody's been qualified financially. Uh, we had a number of bites, but uh, there's been no interest for, for commercial. Tremendous interest, though, for a residential lease property. So, we intend to uh, convert it from a non-producing commercial use to a producing and useful residential use. That's their intent. Yeah, thank you. And very, very uh, uh, beneficial to the city also. We hope so. Other questions? 
one of the few air conditioned residential homes that will be available. Yes. Residential. Well, our, our understanding, because it, it's not primarily for air conditioning, I mean, it, it's, it's necessary, but it is located on Highway 67. And we operated as a commercial venture, um, and we, we wanted to keep the windows closed even on beautiful summer days uh, because of road noise, and that would necessitate the need for air conditioning indoors. That's why it was installed. Anybody have any other questions for staff for Africa? Okay. <clears throat> At this point, we would open it for public comment. Seeing none, we will close it from the public comment. Rebuttal for the applicant, none. Planning Commission, ask any final questions. Be looking for a motion, unless you want to discuss it any further. I move to approve the conditional use permit for construction of a single family residence on the property located at 404 North Highway 67. With the one condition of approval, the access permit. Second. Thank you. Uh, DeVoe? Yes. Watson? Yes. Mattingly? Yes. Probes? Yes. Rollinger? Uh, emphatically, yes, it was constructed the year that I was born. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Schrader? And it's not falling apart. <laughs> I have an additional comment, but won't make it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Motion passes unanimously, and this will move forward to the City Council's docket uh, in September. They'll have the first reading on September 5th, and then the public hearing set for September 19th. All right. Thank, thank you, you, Commissioners, and thank you, Ms. Parnell, for your help. Good luck. Okay, item B is code amendment, an ordinance, an ordinance amending the zoning code sections 18.09.090, S.8, 18.39.030, and 18.33.180H. Related to the use, screening, outside storage, and parking standards for farm, ranch, lawn, and garden supply retail sales facilities. This is Riley. Thank you, Mr. DeVoe. Commissioners, this is a request to amend the zoning code as it relates to the section for farm, ranch, lawn, and garden supplies retail stores. Uh, as we discussed at our work session, we have had a request by a developer who is intending on establishing a farm, ranch, lawn, and garden supply retail outlet in Woodland Park, but discovered that our use matrix does not have a provision for outside storage. It is very typical for a retail um, store of this type to have an area that is fenced for uh, various goods and materials that can be stored outside and can be viewed by the customers. So uh, the developer who is asking for this amendment to the code has a, a contract to purchase the uh, seven acre site on Highway 67, which is just north of um, the Big D Motorsports facility and uh, south of the Sapphire property uh, where Highway 67 heads north and this is Spruce Haven Drive that connects over to Coraline. You can see that in their sketch plan they have about a 22,000 square foot footprint and then this area just to the north of the building would be the outside storage area. They're also proposing to have outside display area, which um, we have proposed to have some uh, design standards for both the outside storage and for the outside display area. So with that, we believe the staff felt that it was reasonable to um, ask for an amendment to our code section and allow for outside storage of materials. 
And so therefore, um, we looked at first our section that deals with lumber, electrical, plumbing, heating, glass, and other building materials, which does allow for all outside storage and materials and equipment to be screened from public view by an approved fence or other suitable buffering. And therefore, we took a look at the farm area, farm supply, and said that we could mirror that same language to allow um, outside storage of materials and equipment. Excuse me. Prior to having the ability for outside storage, this use, this retail use, was allowed in all commercial zones as a permitted use. We felt that with the outside storage, that it made more sense to not allow it in neighborhood commercial, to allow it as a conditional use in the central business district or in the community commercial district, and then have it as a permitted use in the more intense commercial zones of service commercial and heavy service commercial light industrial. And then if somebody was coming forward with a PUD with this use, then they could ask for it permitted conditionally. So just a quick review of our zoning map of what that, that would look like is first of all the very light pink areas which is the neighborhood commercial areas and we don't have too many in town there's uh, fairly limited areas zoned neighborhood commercial that would not be permitted at all in those areas if it were in the central business district which is um, right in the core part of town then we would uh, allow for that with the conditional use permit. We can hear you. Keep going. You can hear me. Thank you. So the central business district would be a conditional use permit. Then the next level of zoning intensity would be the hot pink or the community commercial. That would be a conditional use permit in those areas along Baldwin and down Highway 24 and up <coughs> Highway 67. The service commercial areas are the dark purple. This is the subject site that the developer has a contract on, located on the thoroughfare of Highway 67. And then the other area in town is down where the Saddle Club owns the property and the uh, mobile home park, which too is right adjacent to Walmart and a major thoroughfare. And across the street is community commercial, no residential. On the north side of Woodland Park, we only have uh, com service commercial up on Research Drive and Telemark Parkway. And then heavy service commercial light industrial is also in this location. So we believe that what we're proposing for conditional uses or permitted uses for this type of retail is reasonable. Let's take a 10 minute break. Is that okay? Let's take a 10 minute break for them to finish. Sure. That. If they don't finish that, that sounds we'll stop. good. And we'll be back at 420 up. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> then we'll pull rank. Okay.
would you like me to just toggle back to the uh, zoning map just for a quick quick review yes. the heavy service light industrial area primary area in Woodland Park which these types of retail facilities would be a permitted use are in the Tamarack Tech Park and along research and then the service commercial is also on research drive for the northern portion uh, there is no other commercial in this portion of the zoning map um, most of the community commercial and the central business district in the southern half of the zoning map is uh, in uh, would be a conditional use permit and then a little bit of service commercial here on 67 the majority of the service commercial is down on the highway um, so with that we also believe that it was a good idea to develop standards for the outside fencing and came up with this language that we had discussed in the work session initially but our city attorney has taken a closer look at the language and just slightly um, tweaked not so much this portion but for the outside display so this number 11 would be added to the architectural design standards in the municipal code and would read as follows all retail goods stored outside shall be screened by fencing or other suitable buffering fencing or buffering for outside storage of retail goods shall be solid opaque or semi transparent and be composed of materials compatible with the architectural design of the principal building so this says that you can surround your outside storage with a solid fence or you may build a wall that is solid similar to the way uh, Walmart has a six foot high wall in the back of their building it may be a stuccoed wall we have one of those at uh, Polaris ATV here in town for their outside storage in the back or if it were to be semi transparent we had discussed the option of some decorative fencing with a scrim or a fabric that would be covered on the inside of that fencing and we talked about that being acceptable moving on to the outdoor display areas we're seeing more and more of this in town where retailers are wanting to place uh, display areas on their sidewalks and uh, this particular developer had wanted to put a display area in the parking lot and during the work session you all felt that that was not acceptable for a retail site to have a spot just out near the highway as a display area so the city attorney city attorney and I worked on this a little bit more tightly to tighten this down and came up with the following language outdoor display for retail goods shall be limited to the area at the front of the principal building be placed as near to the principal building as possible not extend beyond 25 feet of any front wall and not extend beyond 50 feet of any front corner of the principal building be configured so that the retail goods do not impede pedestrian and handicap access and not encroach into the parking area vending machines are not allowed outside nothing herein shall limit temporary seasonal display provided that it does not encroach into the parking area to the extent of causing a violation of the minimum parking standard so last uh, meeting when we talked about this criteria 
We hadn't talked specifically about a uh, dimension within the front portion of the building. Uh, the city attorney felt that was important to include to really be able to nail that down more specifically. And then also the um, idea of seasonal displays similar to what City Market might do, although they do have it in front of their area and it's within 25 feet of that front area. Um, many retailers may have seasonal type product that we should be able to allow uh, outside the routine sidewalk display area. So with that, uh, we recommend that you approve Ordinance 1193 to allow for outside storage related to retail sales of farm, ranch, lawn, and garden supplies and establish standards for screening of storage areas and display areas. What questions or discussion would you like to have related to these? Sally, will we be seeing this come before us again when they construct and or, or are they free now to pick the screening that they want based upon? If you pass or recommend the code as it's presented to you this evening and City Council agrees with that, then their site would be a permitted use. We will receive the application and in that permitted use uh, review, the Planning Commission would be given a memo notifying you that, you that we have received it. The staff does an administrative review. There is a 15 day period with which you and any of the neighbors or other public have an opportunity to come in and look at the plans and provide feedback. So you would be able to see it, but it would be a very informal, not a formal hearing in this particular location. If it were a conditional use permit, of course, you'd see it as a public hearing process. Other questions? Sally, would you go back to criteria number 12, the last one on outdoor display? Mm -hmm. The very last sentence, I, I'm having trouble interpreting that mm -hmm. relative to the display in the front of the building. What's the difference between the display in front and the display of seasonal uh, mm -hmm. goods, whatever the word is? Mm -hmm. um, go ahead. This would allow um, for a portion of their site on a very limited seasonal basis to be able to set up a display. Um, during the summer season and not unlike what Walmart did this summer when they put product in their parking lot uh, and allowed for that extra product to be able to be seen by their customers. Um, so that is allowing, it is a little bit more than the outside display areas that are allowed within the 25 feet and the 50 feet on each corner. Um, so it is an added on area, but it is not an area that, whoops, would be permanent display year round that was shown on this sketch plan originally. But seasonally, they could display stuff in that pinkish magenta area. Yes. There's four seasons. I see snow plows. Yeah. yeah. I see chrysanthemums. I see, it's a good I have point. concerns. Yeah. How about if it's seasonal to a maximum of two or three months of the year? So we could narrow it down. It would have to be narrowed. Yeah. I, I would not vote for this the way it is now. Because there's four seasons, like they said, there's four seasons. They'll have four seasonal good things point. out there. Yep, good point. Why not just make them add on the fact that they can add seasonal on as long as it complies with that original 25 feet? 
mm-hmm. but let them be come out past the 25 feet. Sure. In that by the area by the building, as long as it doesn't affect the minimal parking area, and you still protect that greenway kind of. Along sure. The street. It, mm-hmm. If you feel that the area, the 25 feet in front of the building, and then 50 feet from either corner, is adequate. We can nix the seasonal display altogether. That would be my preference at this point. That would be my preference as well. Likewise. I like that idea. Okay, we got three. How does uh, everyone else? Five feet is that very generous, to be honest with you. I was kind of surprised, so I, I like the idea of getting mm-hmm. rid of the of the eliminating the seasonal yeah. idea. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you want us just to talk about that at the motion, or do you want an amendment to that now? Uh, at the motion, okay. we'll capture Fine. that. Okay. So then their seasonal display would be incorporated with the allowable display area? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's good. It also eliminates the need for defining what what is temporary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. So that's Are you a good okay point. With that? I'm fine with that. Okay. <laughs> can, can we go back to the fencing? <laughs> the scrim, is that what it's called? Yes. I thought we had quite a bit of discussion on that, and there were several that were not in favor of having it see through so that it's really ugly. We did originally have some concern about being able to see through and you'll recall Dan was talking about the thread count and that you can get varying degrees of transparency and then we were well how do we set that transparency so in talking with the city attorney we left it fairly open with by calling it semi-transparent And then what we would do as a staff is ask them to provide us with the material that they are planning on to use and the color so that we can have some input onto that. We wouldn't want a semi-transparent that has very large thread, you know, very limited uh, large openings, but more um, dense of a fabric. So the material would have to be approved by you? Yes. The other option you would have would be eliminate some semi-transparent, leave it opaque. Yeah, and then you'll eliminate this option. Right, and that's kind of an attractive option. It is. But if they got to provide you with that, that's different. Yes, we would ask them to provide us a sample of their material. I think we would be too restrictive if we describe the type of scrim and the thread count and things like that. If you recall, mm. Dan said that if it gets too dense, you've got a wind problem. Yeah. Because yeah. mm-hmm. it can't let any air through it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Other questions for you? Uh, I have a question. Uh, take me back to the workshop a couple of weeks ago, and I, I don't remember looking at uh, permitted uses for retail sales, lumber, electrical, plumbing, et cetera, under service commercial, it's, it's conditional, and, it, then, yes. and then drop down to retail sales of farm, ranch, et cetera, et cetera. Under service commercial, it's permitted. Yes. <clears throat> why? A lumber yard why has quite a bit more impact uh, than a ranch and garden and farm supply in that lumber yards you know oftentimes have a lot of um, uh, lifts and what are they called the forklifts forklifts that are moving about moving material um, delivering of material much larger yards uh, than a storage area for goods so that's why I think that a, a traditional lumber yard uh, really has uh, quite a bit of activity. Contractors coming and going, 
uh, with those forklifts. They oftentimes will have semi-covered areas as well to protect their lumber. So I can see where you would want uh, a lumber yard, a true lumber yard, to have a conditional use. This is more of retail sales for everyday customers um, and not necessarily that construction feel. I wonder what tractor supply yards look like, and I know several people here have actually seen those yards. Uh, do they need, you know, do they have forklifts to move things around? It's I mean, you not know, like an implement dealer, I'm sure they'll have a forklift. You know, you know what's in the watering tanks and things that got to be loaded on trucks and stuff like that. Yeah, <coughs> think fencing, uh, those sorts yeah. of things. It won't yeah. be like an implement dealer where they've got right working on right. huge equipment. Right? No, right. It, it really is not tractor sales, <laughs> small implements, and lawn mowers. Snow blowers, et cetera? Snow blowers. Mm -hmm. So who will these folks compete with in, 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 the, in the city, in your opinion? Well, um, Right now, I mean, the cowhand carries the clothing side of what they compete with. They have quite, I understand, a large uh, apparel portion to their interior section. Um, I know that Woodland Hardware is planning on expanding their merchandise to include uh, ranch and farm equipment with their expansion. Um, I don't think uh, they may compete somewhat with Foxworth Galbraith with the fencing uh, mm -hmm. and the smaller construction type materials. Um, Walmart, maybe a little bit with implements and tools and things like that. But <clears throat> Fertilizer, landscaping materials, stuff like that. Right. They all, yeah. Are the they garden. carrying um, food? Like animal feed. food and feed. they will yes. carry feed. Then divide feed would be a competitor. Right. Right. Or yeah. the feed down. One down of the people the in the park from Texas loves that store. He buys all his dog food there. He says he got the lowest price of dog food of anywhere. So you know they're going to sell dog food. The competition is, there is a always good. Concern for animal control if they're going to be having feed and everything. No, I'm I'm being mean serious. Rodent. Pest control. Road, yeah, pest control. Okay. You know, and yeah. the bears. <laughs> well, I don't think it's open. I think it's all in like enclosed in sheds or enclosed. Or yeah, with in the, the fencing. Mm -hmm. like okay. So, <coughs> in, in conclusion, you're you're comfortable with uh, conditional versus permitted. I am because of the difference in the in the in the nature of their of their activities. Yes, and I, I especially think that this was a great opportunity to be able to include design standards for the enclosures. No question. To uh, to keep us legal with this, because when we get into talking as a uh, deliberating as a, as a committee or as a I really would like Sally to stay involved with that. So we'll say we're opening the public hearing. Any comment? No, we're closing the public hearing. Uh, rebuttal from applicant? None. Uh, now is the time that we're going to deliberate with the assistance of Sally for questions just like you asked. Yep. Is that okay if I just twist Yes, that tweet that's that wonderful. Out? We'll move right into the deliberations. Okay. Questions? Mine's been answered. Let's me, let me explain my concerns, okay? And I've shared this with Sally, so this isn't anything I'm surprising, I'm, I'm springing on her. Um, when, you, when you change that to permitted use, that means you give up all right as a commission to discuss it. It is strictly a decision made by planning, okay? That means if that property where the uh, saddle club is, and we have a Lowe's coming in, which would fit the category, or a Home Depot, that decision to do that will be done 
within the planning committee and you as a group will have no ability to ask questions and concerns. There will be no public hearings for the public to ask questions like there was with Walmart. But that was a different reason why. But you're giving up the right to do that. Any kind of questions to talk to an effort. If it passes, council has got to do that as well. Council is giving up the right to ask any questions or any kind of concerns or ask for any information if a Lowe's would come to town. It will strictly be done as a planning committee function. There will be a site plan review in which you can review it, but that doesn't necessarily give you any authority to change anything. Would a Lowe's be a farm ranch in a lawn garden supply, or yeah, would that would be, be that would be lumber electrical? So that's conditional use right now. Correct. They'd be in the top. So we would have a say. They'd be in the top. But block. if it was something that wasn't that, so another feed store sort of thing. Any kind of a large department store, anybody that's got outside items for sale, right? If they don't have outside items for sale, is it permitted use as well? It is. If you had a furniture store, household furniture store or appliance store with no outside storage, it would be permitted. American Furniture Warehouse? Right. Yes. But uh, Steve is correct. Uh, the Lowe's or the large home improvement store I would slot as um, a uh, conditional use, and you would see that. But if you had a small Home Depot that doesn't have lumber, it wouldn't be. It's All I'm saying is, that, and if you can vote, that's fine. If you want, if you want to do that, but <coughs> what you're doing is giving up your right mm -hmm. as a as a commission to ask any questions of the applicants or have any kind of public hearing that the, the public could come and speak. Well, to. that was the primary reason why I asked the question. The the C versus the P. Yeah. And I mean, we're talking us plus any future. Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, this is unless somebody goes back and tries to change it again, which we'll be here forever. Oh, <laughs> yeah, sounds great. My concern no. that I talked to Sally about is we won't be here forever. Sally won't be here forever. Okay. So we're giving up their rights in the future to question yes. it. You're giving up the rights of the Planning Commission in the future. I just you have that so you know that that's what's taking place. Comfortable with that? Or we can change this to a condition. change it to a condition. Or you could use. amend it to a to a, a condition. I think I'd be in favor then. Pardon? I'd be in favor then. Me too. What you're doing with the conditional use thing is causing more time, more cost for the developer, the the shop owner to be able to put a retail facility in a service commercial zone, which service commercial is our highest level retail commercial zone um, and intended for a big box development. Right. So they're high impact facilities. Which the So it probably warrants more time and effort. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. It's one, what's one, one position. So you have the choice of either amending the code that we've got now. Yeah, you could, you could, you could, you could amend it, pass an amendment that would be conditional, mm -hmm. and then go on and pass all the other work that's been done. And that would be fine to do it. Or you can approve this as written, or you can disapprove it as written. It's your choice to do it any way you want to do it. But if you're going to want, if you want it conditional, you have to amend it. Uh, Sally, the, the, and a, this is a very difficult question to answer. Uh, how much, a, how much incremental burden to a developer do you think we're we're putting on them in terms of hours or in terms of dollars? I mean, I mean, is it substantial? Is it is it a tenfold increase? Um, you're going from a 30-day process for the administrative review to a 90-day process through the public hearing process. Um, and then there's, there's not as much certainty for them. I mean, 
mean, whenever you go through a conditional use, it can be denied. Um, a permitted use is a use by right, and as long as they meet the standards and can be approved based on the design standards and all the other traffic, landscaping, architectural, uh, drainage, parking, those standards are met, then the staff is compelled to approve it. So it is, you know, it's a less risk on the developer's uh, standpoint to have a permitted use by right in a zone, um, as opposed to having to go through the public hearing process of two public hearings uh, with Planning Commission and City Council. So, and time is money for developers. Right. If they can get through the process and have certainty or predictability associated with that process as a permitted use, then it is definitely to their advantage. Um, and what does 60 more days add to their costs? begin to be able right. to propose. Right. No, I, I, I didn't expect a dollar figure. Uh, there comes a point where the scale of the project deserves more scrutiny. I think. That's just my personal opinion. But, and, but don't you also think that the developer knows, you know, the bigger the building, the bigger the, the, the project, the more time it's going to take to get approved. I mean, is that not logical? It's logical. You know, Walmart didn't know that they, they knew what they were going to get that in 30 days. It took them 10 years, but nonetheless. If you recall in the case of Walmart, they had to increase. That was the, that was the most expensive Walmart bit built west of the Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Because of design standards, this console, the previous console. I remember insisted, Walmart very well. Insisted yeah. on. Even with the yeah. permitted use, Sally, they still have to comply to all the standards. Absolutely. And I, I guess I'm going to put my faith in the planning department to do the right thing. And I personally think that it's not necessary to change that to a conditional use. You know, thinking about the, the, the additional time, 30 to 90 days, okay. public hearings, uh, I would hope that a developer, particularly folks like like these or any others that might come in, they certainly have a very long-term view. They're not looking out two years, three years, five years, ten years. They're, you know, their their time horizon is very, very long. And if they if if they wish to conduct that kind of a business here, uh, I think th I think they've probably done their work, and so it's, it's a couple of more months, and it's a few more bucks, but their you know their their time horizon is very very long. It's 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 not like a guy who's you know putting in a tent here or or uh, you know the uh, uh, barbecue guy who hauls up to the uh, uh, brew place or you know that of course that's exceedingly short term, but. You know, I, I think certainly in corporate America, uh, the time horizon is very long. Uh, another difficult question maybe to answer, but would you view a, a conditional use being restrictive of development that, that might turn away uh, potential? Um, it, it always provides a few more hurdles for that developer. I mean, if they can get something done through a permitted use, use by right process, that is far preferable. Uh, and just a comment on the magnitude or the size of projects, uh, we just approved by right a um, apartment complex which has 168 units went through the same process as an apartment complex that would have been 20 units. So it's the standards are what you use as your guide to be able to control and manage the very best quality development you can get. Not to say or just uh, uh, 
um, I, I, I value the public process. I think that whenever we have a public process, it's um, a benefit to the community because you get people who are interested in that neighborhood to be engaged and involved in it. And I value the input from nine more people looking at a case closely and seven more council members looking at a case closely. But it is a balance between a property right and a community <coughs> right. To move this along, if anybody has a desire to amend it to make that conditional, then we need a motion and a second. And if the motion and a second doesn't appear, then we'll go on for the question, if you so desire, as it reads. So it's time to speak or move on. Does anybody desire to, to put a motion, the effect of conditional? I'd like to make a motion that uh, retail sales, farm, lawn, ranch, lawn, garden supplies, etc., uh, and service commercial be uh, conditional as opposed to permitted. Do we have a second? I will second. Discussion? Okay. Question? Okay. Watson? No. Mattingly? No. Probes? Yes. Rollinger? Aye. Schrader? Abstain. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mr. Schroeder, you must vote. I don't want to. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> okay. Stannard? Yes. And DeVoe? Yes. Okay. Motion passes, so that can be amended and adjusted and move forward should you adopt the remainder of the Now we need another either discussion or a motion to adopt the what is the number on it? Seven. I move if it's appropriate that we um, adopt ordinance number 1193 one with the modification that we discussed on item number 12 that Sally presented to us and as amended by the previous vote. And that item on number 12 is to remove the, the seasonal, seasonal display side temporary. Display. Yeah. Right. Any other discussion? Uh, I need second. a second. I'm sorry. Second. Excuse me. No. Okay. Ready? Mattingly? Yes. Probes? Yes. Rollinger? Aye. Schrader? Yes. Stannard? Yes. Uh, DeVoe? Yes. And Watson? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. So your recommendation will move forward to the City Council on the 5th with a uh, first reading in September and then the public hearing on the 19th. Thank you. That was a good discussion. <laughs> item four, uh, item five, Chairman's report. Planning to you got some to talk about. Really all that I have is to remind you uh, that our next meeting is scheduled for September 12th, the second Thursday in September. Uh, we will. We don't have any cases, so we will dive back into the use matrix and have a full work session for two hours uh, on the 12th. Um, we would recommend that we forego the work session this evening. Thank you. Any other comment, Ms. Kasha? I have a question to Sally. Uh, last week or week before last, there was an article in the Courier about our relationship with Teller County. Could oh, you the building department. The, with the building department, could you elaborate <coughs> on that? It was kind of confusing, but does that impact us at all? I can share with you that uh, the commissioners, Teller County commissioners, decided to discontinue the intergovernmental agreement 
that um, Teller County provides building services. So as a result, the city will be implementing our building services. We're not sure exactly what that's going to look like at this point in time. We're exploring lots of options and have set up an open house for our contractors, builders, architects, suppliers to come uh, on September 3rd, Tuesday evening, 6.30 here in this room. We would like to hear from our customers exactly what uh, their uh, goals would be with a new building department operated by the city. So does that mean that you will no longer have to have Teller County do your inspections as you, it'll be done by the city? That's correct. Does that mean we have to hire more people? We're not exactly sure how this is going to look. There are uh, private businesses uh, out there that provide these inspection services and plan review and but we will be processing, taking in building permits and issuing COs out of the planning department. I'd love to be a fly on the wall with them because that's one of the biggest complaints that I hear is going through the permit process with Teller. Teller. When is that effective? Or do you December have it? 1st. Wow. December. Not much time. Okay. Okay. Do, uh, Not much time. Do we have any idea what fraction of uh, Teller County's building services work was done in Woodland Park? That's a good question. Uh, what I did receive was the fees that had been collected for the past seven years within the city limits. It has varied widely, but the seven-year average is about $160,000 per year. This is probably not going to save the city any money. It's going to give the city a little bit more control mm -hmm. over, especially if they hire contractors to do it. And ever since I've been involved with the city here, there seems like there's always conflict between the county and the city over that. And this will now be an opportunity to put it all in the city's lap and see if everybody thinks that the does, uh, right. does Cripple Creek <laughs> inspect their own? Cripple Creek used to have their own building department. They have now recently contracted with one of these independent uh, companies, and so um, as well. But it wasn't Victor, done by Teller. Victor has been spending a year to put together their own building. I can see that. I can see. I was going to say it's Victor. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably been it a takes a year time. to paint a strike yeah, yeah. down the, the county was supposedly road. losing money. I think the county they, said they were spending more. They money. said it was a fiscal decision. It was a fiscal yeah. decision. So. Thanks for Well, having Thank recently you. built, I've no, had my battles with Teller County. <laughs> oh, the Memorial Park oh, yeah, meeting. Oh, it's it's next Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Next yeah. Wednesday. That would be, a, and that's at night, at yeah. the Cultural Center? Seven. At the Cultural Center. I think 6.30. That would be a good thing to attend because they're going to present the different uses for that park. Yeah. Yeah. You can make that. That would be a good thing to go to. Yes, it would. Okay. Anything else? Nothing else, sir. Anybody need uh, a three or four minute respite before we start our work session? No, we're not doing we're a not work doing session. We're not doing a work session. session. Who's playing? Sorry. It may be preempted with weather. Oh, too long. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you can pull up.